For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Have you ever heard that phrase? A couple of hundred years ago, that phrase was uttered by a man named Sir Isaac Newton, a world-renowned mathematician and physicist. Newton made that statement when he was discussing the laws of motion in physics. Isn't it amazing that here we are, hundreds of years later, and that one statement can be used to explain debits and credits in accounting? Before we get too involved in the discussion of debits and credits, let's learn a few basics. Every business has various transactions that occur each day. Each of these transactions are examined by accountants and recorded in the accounts that they affect. In the first steps of accounting, accounts are broken down into T accounts. T accounts are simply visuals to help accounting professionals see the effects of transactions on accounts individually. The accounting system that is used most often this day and time is called double entry accounting. Double entry accounting requires that every business transaction be recorded in at least two accounts. One account will be debited and one account will be credited. So now that you have the basics down, let's talk a little bit about what debits and credits are. Debits and credits are both forms of notation that are used in accounting to keep the balance in accounts. A debit is an entry on the left side of the T account that increases asset and prepaid expense balances and decreases liability and equity account balances. A credit, the opposite of a debit, is an entry on the right side of the T account. It increases liability, expense, and owner's equity accounts and decreases asset and prepaid expense accounts. It can seem a little confusing to understand debits and credits, so let's look at an example. Peggy owns a dressmaking shop. It's taken her two months, but she's just finished an elegant wedding dress for a customer. The customer paid a $200 deposit on the dress before Peggy made it. She comes in and picks up her dress and pays Peggy the $400 that she still owes on the dress. The total cost of the dress is $600. Using this example, you can see that Peggy was given $400 today for a balance due on a dress. That $400 is a debit to the cash account. This debit increases the cash balance by the $400. Cash is an asset account. Since a deposit was made on the dress, it was sold on account, 